Hello YouTube, I hope that everyone is doing very well. Currently, I am traveling. I thought I would make this audio portion of my video before going to dinner. So let's get started. I learned a long time ago not to take responsibility or credit for another person's actions. First, let's be clear, let's be crystal clear. Being poor does not equate to being menacing. It may be expected, but it is not mandatory. Anyone paying attention knows that one who is determined to achieve a better lifestyle is naturally disposed to achieve it. However, life is more complex than this. It would be great, it would be so wonderful if power, success, and wealth was distributed according to diligence and talent. However, internal biases, greed, and nepotism provides brambles difficult to mount. This said, one should not shun appropriate use of patience, thriftiness, personal discipline, and smart work, not necessarily hard work, though this may be required as well. I do not suffer from a disconnect, though I am frequently told this by trolls due to my supposed antiquated language. The reprehensible actualities of the police is apparent to me. Since I was a young man, I was schooled regarding their mission. The mission of law enforcement that I learned as a 10-year-old is to administer the will of the state. Order is rarely defined by the ordinary citizen. Normally, this is defined by the government. Preserve the peace against disruptive elements, which means social control, is police function. I would wager that no amount of tweaking policy will deliver us, the American people, from our current nightmare, a paradigm shift where the police serve individuals is mandatory. Currently, we have police serving the state via the umbrella of law. Let's put forth what should be common knowledge. Warfare, no matter its configuration, is more costly than arbitration. Therefore, the state has two options to save resources. One, crush the active struggle, or two, resolve disputes by employing lower-cost methods of settlement. This said, waging war should be a final match, not your go-to solution. Virtues. Hmm. Virtues are never old-fashioned. People in general have become lazy and shun civilizing influences. That's the truth. Please, prove me wrong. I would love for you to do so. It appears fashionable to turn our backs on that which is healthy, which is wholesome. Though I know these two words, healthy and wholesome, have lots of baggage and can be used to manipulate others, but this is not my intent. Let's be clear. In-group, out-group, drama is something humans seem not willing to transcend, though they can construct neuromorphic chips, construct virtual worlds, possibly use 3D printers to replace cartilage and bone, or project images directly onto a person's retina, yet constantly sink deeper and deeper into their superficial moral pits while suffocating in fear. Various nefarious elites 
use this actuality to deviously influence their underlings. This said, after residing in the suburbs as well as the inner city, I have witnessed a large quantity of low end women living off the state. I have witnessed phenotypical traits aside, men willing to breed and take no responsibility for themselves or their children. The problem seen with opportunists under the pretense of protesting is cascading failures. However, this requires too much brain power for many to comprehend. There is no easy fix. Some people are broken. Some are low vibrational entities. Some lack an educational component. Some have mental health issues. There seems to be a never-ending list of societal challenges that could be addressed. Shame on the savages. Shame on you. Damn, shame on you, who destroy other people's property under the guise of a protest. These imbeciles play right into the hands of those who feed off of fear. Anger can be a tool, a positive tool for change, if fashioned wisely. Rage is merely wasted energy that can be used as ammunition against one. As it refers to black people, rage is a tool that supports old propaganda. There are already enough right-winger, praise God, sissies that would be delighted to waste you, to put you into the ground, to deliver you to your permanent dirt nap with an AR-15. Hmm, I know this may be difficult for some to comprehend. Rioting is bogus. Simply put, it may achieve, temporarily speaking, it may achieve the goal of getting the attention of another, but it will forever taint your reputation. It serves as an excuse to bring in a fully-fledged police state. You think things are bad now? Do you really think about your part that you are playing? Think about what you are contributing to this mess. After all, children who result to desperation must be managed. It used to be that we only had to look out for agent provocateurs. However, now we have punks who are willing to do their job for free. What a sad state of affairs. We do not need naive, wannabe, criminal lords. We do not need zombies. We do not need those who wallow in emotion. We do not need those masquerading as concerned citizens. You see, Amos Wilson had it right. Dr. Wilson, if you don't know who he is, you should. He said, in his book, Blueprint for Black Power. If I remember correctly, he said, black consumer tastes and habits are not monolithic or unchanging, in that they reflect reactions to current fashions, trends, fads, and the like. It is pertinent in this context to note that these tastes and habits also reflect current states of political consciousness and stages of political social development. Think on that. Think on that. If you are a young black man or black woman going out to face the system and thinking that your stupidity or your failed reasoning is going to generate success, it only brings you a temporary release, nothing more. A man by the name, and pardon me because I know my pronunciation of his name is incorrect, but I will try anyway, as I want to share his words as my final thoughts 
Gustav or Gustav, that's capital G U S T A V, Le Bon, capital L E, capital B O N. He wrote a very interesting book called The Crowd, and I believe it was in chapter, I think it was、uh, chapter four. He talks about the religious shape assumed. By the convictions of crowds, and I did memorize one passage in there. I'm trying to not butcher it. He said, "We have shown that crowds do not reason; that they accept or reject ideas as a whole; that they tolerate neither discussion nor contradiction." And that the suggestions brought to bear on them invade the entire field of their understanding, and tend at once to transform themselves into acts. Please think upon these words. Well, it has been a pleasure speaking with you. I must now tend to my body. Please have a wonderful day or night, whatever time it may be. Thank you again. Be well.